In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a survey with your Gravity Form so you can collect information from your followers or whatever kind of information you want to collect. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more tutorials for you. And with that out of the way, Let's create a survey using Gravity Forms. I'll see you in the screen capture. To create our first survey in Gravity Forms, the first thing we have to do is install the survey add-on. I'm gonna assume you have the Gravity Forms plugin installed. If you don't yet, click the link below or check out the previous video or one of the previous videos in this playlist. And you're gonna to have to have the developer's license for the plugin for this to work. If we hop back over to the Gravity Forms page, the survey option is only available in this first column which is the developer license column. This $200 is for the entire year. That covers all the updates and support for the plugin. So if you wanna do surveys, you have to have this developer's license, otherwise this will not work. And if you have the developer's license and you have Gravity Forms installed and you're ready to rock and roll on these surveys, hover over forms, click on add-ons, and then scroll down. I'm gonna use a find option. Scroll down till you find survey. It's about halfway down the page or further, actually it's near the bottom of the page. Then we just click on this little install button right here. Then we click on activate plugin. And now we have our surveys options activated. If we hover over forms again, we see there's nothing changed here. But if we click on new form, and let's just call this survey, on the right hand side under advanced fields. So all that's been added is this one little survey button here, but this little button does a lot of stuff. So if we drag and drop this over or just click on it to add it, we have our survey box Click on the down arrow to open the options. We see we have a question pre-filled here and we can use that or not use that. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. You can update the question here. You can update the options here. But where it gets really interesting is our survey field type. If we click this drop down, we can do the Likert, which is the one we have currently displayed here with these radio buttons. Rank, rating, radio buttons, text, which are checkboxes, single line text, paragraph text, and drop downs. And a lot of these also include the ability to score. Meaning, if they choose strongly disagree, maybe they get minus five points. Disagree is minus four, neutral is zero. Agree is plus four, strongly agree is plus five. And then you can add up their score throughout their, their survey and give them a, a, their score and whatever that score represents, you can give them personalized feedback on that. And that's where the power of surveys really comes in. So this very first one, the Likert, looks like this. I'm just gonna call this Likert. We're gonna go through every one to see how each one looks. This is our Likert. I'm gonna duplicate this. And I'm gonna choose rank. Now the rank uh, survey is you have the same number of choices, but you, you rank them. So the person who's doing the survey can actually drag and drop these Maybe I can in the demo. No, you can't in the demo. We'll see it live at the end of this video. But they can actually drag and drop and move these choices around and rank them in a specific order. So if that is a type of question or a type of survey question that you need for yours, you would know. And this is how you create it. So we're going to call this the, the ranking question. And then we're going to duplicate that. And we're going to create the next option. the rating option. And this is where you rate things, whatever your rating skill is. Here we have the example of terrible, not so great, neutral, pretty good, excellent. You can have whatever you want here. And that is the, the rating. I'm gonna duplicate that. And if you don't wanna duplicate, you can also drag and drop this, this button over every time. Duplicating that is fine to be faster. Radio buttons, very similar to the Likert, just there vertically versus the Likert has this horizontal layout like this. But rating and, and or the, sorry, the radio buttons and the Likert are pretty much the same in how they work. I call this radio buttons. Also, the radio buttons don't allow calculations, whereas the Likert, I believe, does. Yeah, the Likert allows scoring and the radio button does not by default. You could hack it in with JavaScript, but why do that when it's built into the plugin if you use the Likert? OK, 
Okay, so we're going to duplicate the radio buttons. And then we're going to create the next option, which is checkboxes. And I'm going to change this to checkboxes. And pretty similar to radio buttons, they select boxes, but with checkboxes, they can select as many as they want. Radio buttons and likers, they can only select one. For the description, this is often the place where you'd have choose all that apply. You see that a lot in surveys. So you'd want a checkbox if you want them to choose multiple items or even a selection box. So those are the checkboxes. Gonna insert another one and we're gonna do the single line text. Pretty self-explanatory. They can have a text answer. Maybe uh, in your own words, tell me how you feel. You can also set a maximum number of characters, which can be helpful if you don't want a novel to, written, to be written in here. So the last one, or the next one, sorry, is paragraph text. Very similar to single line text, only a bigger box to write in. Paragraph text, we only have um, or we don't have the input mask and the custom template options. So just the text and maximum characters. Duplicate this guy. And then the very last one, we have our drop downs. And with the drop down, you have a bunch of choices and people would pick them from a drop down. Pretty straightforward. We've all seen drop downs before. They're super easy to create in here. You want to add options just as with pretty much every element in gravity forms you want to add more options to it click the plus you want to take options away click the minus you want to reorder them hover over these up and down arrows drag and drop these guys so you can reorder them so that we have this basic survey let's go see what it looks like on a page so we're going to update here we're going to create a new page i'm going to call it survey then we're going to click on the add form button here I'm going to select our survey I'm going to remove the title and the description then insert and then click on publish. And then I'm gonna open this URL and see how it looks. So here's our survey. The Likert isn't on there for some reason. I have to check into that. But we have this ranking option where you can rank these. Something to do with the CSS on the theme itself is causing the selection to pop up way above. This may not happen on yours or, or it might, depending on what your theme is. But people are able to order these and you can give scoring based on whether they order them correctly. The rating options, of course, have the ratings. Radio buttons, you can choose one only. Check boxes, choose as many as you want. In your own words, I feel well. I feel well for both of these. I didn't change this title, but this one's the drop down. I'm just going to choose that one, make sure I've answered all these, and then click on submit. We have this not yet personalized ending to the survey. It says, thank you for contacting us. That's not what we want. So if we want to change that, we head back to our forms. We go to our settings and then confirmations. And that was our default confirmation, which comes default with every form you create. And here's the text that we just saw on the page. If we click on edit right here, we can then enter our own custom text. We can choose a page that they are sent to, a page on your site that they are sent to after they complete the survey. You can even pass in query data. So if you ask for a name and email address or a phone number or whatever kind of information, you could even make Mad Lib surveys if you wanted, just for entertainment value. And you can pass that information to that page and then create personalized pages using that. And you can also redirect to an external URL. You just enter it here. Again, you can pass variables. So this, I'm just gonna change this to, thanks for taking the survey. Click on save confirmation. And one of the big benefits of the surveys are the survey results. So this tab is added when you add the survey add-on. And over time, when you get a lot of responses, you will see a lot more data in here. Right now, it's not much data, it's just me doing it once. But for each question, you see the frequency and the average choices for those questions, which is pretty cool. And if you have a large audience, you can then report this data out if you wanted to. You can use it however you want. But if we head back to edit over here, we're going to edit some things. So we noticed that the Likert button was missing because it's not actually here. That's why it was missing. For some reason, it was deleted. 
So if we drag and drop another one of these options over here, it's gonna change this to Likert, then click on update. Hopefully this time it sticks around. It's still here now. Should be able to refresh this page and have it, or just go to that page again. And there's the Likert. So a lot of surveys that you see, especially for customer feedback surveys, where you have strongly agree, disagree, these choices, this is the format you see. And this is built right in to the system. So it's super easy to create these. You can only choose one, which is fine. You can even custom style them with CSS after the fact if you want to, but the styling is pretty good. I mean, it's neutral. It'll be good enough for pretty much every survey of that nature. So these are now all of the survey question choices or question technologies you have available in Gravity Forms. And using these, you should be able to create pretty much any type of survey that you want. And at the end, you probably want to have them or have them enter their name and email. So we just drag and drop the name field and the email field down here at the very bottom. So then when they submit it, you also get their name and email. Just refresh this page out here again. So you have the, the name, first name, last name, and email. You can of course change the first and last if you don't want to collect both of those. Just pop into the name field here and turn off last. And now it'll just have first name as the choice. And then you can also integrate this with various CRMs, including Infusionsoft, uh, possibly MailChimp. I don't know how much data they would collect as a CRM, but Infusionsoft, you can definitely collect every single one of these responses and create a new contact using the Infusionsoft add-on. And that's pretty cool. And you can even then send personalized feedback from Infusionsoft based on the ways they answered these questions if you wanted to. This is only available on the single line text survey question. And the mask is really neat because it, it basically predefines what people can enter information. So a standard one is a US phone number, US phone number with an extension, a date, tax ID, social security number, zip code, full zip code. And these are predefined. So if we click on US phone number, for example, so I'm gonna change this to what is your phone number, click on update. And it's hard to visualize what it is unless I actually show you. So if we click on this to refresh the page, we see we can now enter a phone number, but when we click into the field, you see how these dashes appear with the brackets and the dash right here. Basically, all you can do is enter numbers. And all I'm doing is type in the numbers. It, put, it fills the spaces for me as I go. I cannot enter letters. I cannot enter special characters. The only thing I can enter is numbers. And that is the power of using the, uh, the input masks. And the same goes for every other one that you choose with the extension, the date, the tax ID. It has these predefined because these are standard. So they're never any different. They're always using the same type of characters, other numbers or letters sometimes. But tax ID, this is the standard format. And there you go, that's all I can enter for the number of characters. My tax ID, I can only enter numbers again, no special characters. So it helps guide the user to give you specifically what you want and need when they fill out these forms. Now we're gonna do something a little bit different, just uh, show you some more functionality. I'm gonna delete all the questions we have here, except for this Likert question at the top. And I'm gonna show you something that makes this Gravity Forms really easy to use and one of my favorite plugins to use because of just this one feature. I'm just gonna duplicate the Likert a bunch of times. Okay, so I duplicated it three or four or five times, I don't even know. I'm gonna refresh this page and we have these questions here. And at some point when you have too many of these on a page, it becomes overwhelming. So you wanna split them up into separate pages, which in Gravity Forms is super easy. All we do is go to standard fields and say we want to have two of these questions per page. We click and hold the page option. We drag it between the area where we want the page to break. It adds it in there. We get a little message saying up here with an up arrow here, this is the end of the page and this is the top of the new page down here. And let's say we want to have, like I said, two per page, you know, there's split right there. And the last page we just have one question and then name and email. We click on update. And then we refresh the page. We now have our survey on three pages and we can answer these questions and then click on next. This progress bar will update to about 66% now. Answer those two, click on next again. Answer this one, enter our name. 
I have the name field twice. Very good. Enter our email and then click on submit. And then we have a multi-page survey, which for a lot of people is a lot less intimidating than seeing a thousand questions on a page. If you break it up into smaller chunks, maybe a thousand is too many. But instead of seeing 10 questions on a page, you break that up into three separate pages or four pages. It's a lot less intimidating for people. And psychologically, as they progress through each page, they get more committed to finishing it because it seems like more work having clicked through pages. So studies have found that if you have pages, there's actually a higher completion rate. And of course the completion rate goes down the more pages you have. So you have 52 pages on your survey, you're not gonna go complete very many. But if it's just a handful of pages, breaking up into pages, you get more response rate than you will keeping on a single page. Unless of course you just have one question and that's the best but most surveys are more than one question. So this is how we create surveys in Gravity Forms. And I, I know for sure that I haven't covered your exact use case. So if there's something that you want to know about that I didn't cover, just let me know down below. But we did cover every one of the survey options, how to use them and how to incorporate them. And that's how we create a survey. They can be any length, they can be multiple pages, you can set them up however you like. But what I do know, the shorter the survey, the more likely it is people will actually fill it out, which is what you want. You want them to fill it out. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more tutorials for you. And next up is clicking one of these videos on the right hand side, or just keep on cruising along in this Gravity Forms playlist. And until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.